Hi, this is Adam Koo, and in this video, we're going to look at how traders use support and resistance levels to discover supply and demand zones to make better decisions. Read the disclaimer, and let's begin. Okay, so when you look at price on a chart, you realize that there are certain price levels where the price tends to meet and reverse. So we call these support and resistance levels or zones. So for example, if you look at Boeing, notice that the price over here is on an uptrend, obviously. It goes up and when it hits a level over here, about $95, it starts coming down. And then it goes up again, <clears throat> hits that similar level of 95 plus or minus a few dollars, and comes down again, all the way down in fact, and goes up again, and once again it hits at 95, comes down again, hits 95, comes down again. Now, it's got to tell you that there's something at $95. Something's there, right? And what's there is that there's an excess of supply versus demand at $95. In other words, it's what we call a supply zone where there are many sellers that are waiting at $95 and psychologically, they feel that $95, that is too high, they want to sell, okay? So once you see that, you can draw a line connecting these highs, all right? And we call that a resistance level or a kind of like a ceiling of which the price can't seem to break above. Now, a few things to understand. Number one, uh, to qualify as a significant resistance, the price has to be hit at least three times. So one, two, and three. That's a resistance. So Two points connected together is a, I call it a probationary resistance. It's, it's only confirmed if it's three times. That's the first lesson to learn. The second lesson is this, that resistance and support lines, well, they're not really brick walls. What, what do I mean by brick wall? Brick wall is, is kind of like, it's like a brick wall, right? The price goes up, hits it exactly and comes down. Exactly and comes down. It doesn't happen that way, right? In reality, it's more like a fence, okay, like a fence where the price goes up and it kind of can bend, it, it bends the fence sometimes and comes back down again. So it can go uh, kind of like, so there's a buffer, right? In other words, in reality, <clears throat> for example, if this is a uh, resistance, the price doesn't exactly go up and hit that price and comes down like that. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes the price can go a bit beyond that resistance and come down. Or it may fall a bit short and come down. So in other words, it is not really a line per se, it is a zone. So you've got to give a bit of a buffer when drawing these support and resistance levels. Okay, Now how do you draw it? Let me explain a little further. Okay, <clears throat> So let's imagine you've got a price going up and coming down, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. And say once like that. Okay, great. So where would you draw the resistance level? Would you draw it at over here at A? Okay, sorry, let me draw that again. Again, I can't really draw straight all the time. Doing my best. Okay. So would the resistance be here? at say A, or would it be say here at B, okay? Now I, I prefer to draw the line at B rather than A, why? Because B is more significant because it touches more points. In fact, it touches four points, whereas for A it only touches one point. So I always draw the line of best fit, where it touches as many points as possible. Knowing full well that it's not a line really, although it can draw a line, but it's a zone. So you've got to give a bit of buffer that the price can sometimes go a bit above and a bit below that level. All right? So that's one thing to understand about drawing these lines. In this video, we're going to practice drawing them on charts in a short while. So how do we use these support and resistance, okay? Now, here's the concept. Whenever a stock fails to break a resistance, 
it creates bearish momentum. So in other words, whenever there's a, there's a resistance level and the price is not able to break the resistance, what happens? That's right, you will turn bearish and tend to come all the way back down again. It's kind of like you jumping up and your head hits the ceiling. What happens when your head hits the ceiling, right? You go out, right? You then dodge. That's what happens to the price, okay? So the lesson is this. Avoid buying stocks or avoid going long when there's a resistance level just above, all right? So always remember, before you go long check, is there a resistance level that's really close by? If it is, don't buy because if you buy, there's a high chance it's going to go up by a bit, hit the resistance and go, it's going to go all the way down, all right? So never buy just below a resistance level. That is rule number one, okay? So if you see a resistance being tested many times, okay, when would you want to buy? Again, you only want to buy when that resistance level is taken out. In other words, there's enough demand to absorb the supply of that price level. And you see a pattern like that, where that resistance is tested once, twice, at least three times, right? So the price can't get above this because there's a lot of sellers there, right? Now, what happens over here? Over here, you see what we call a breakout pattern because the price breaks out of that resistance, okay? And this would be a better time to buy and enter at the start of a new uptrend than being caught in the consolidation that could last for a long time, okay? So that's one of the things to look out for. When a stock breaks above resistance, it creates bullish momentum, okay? But understand something. The stock market is kind of like, like sports. Sometimes in sports, you play basketball, you play soccer, you get faked out, right? Where they, you know, the guys come in and they fake you out, they fake you out, right? Now, sometimes the stock market does that as well, where it breaks out and it's a fake out. It's a fake, it's a fake breakout. So when a lot of amateurs buy here, what happens, right? The price goes down and they lose money. So you have to learn how to identify the false breakouts from the real breakouts. And we're going to learn that in a subsequent video on trading breakouts. Okay, but for now, just understand that we are looking for breakout patterns before going long. Okay, and we don't want to buy below a resistance level. Got it? Great. Now, do you also realize something interesting? Notice when the price breaks out of this resistance, Right, this was a resistance over here, a ceiling, right? And if the price goes up and the price happens to come back down again and retraces, notice what happens. It touches this resistance that has now become a support level. Can you see? And then it continues going up. So that's an interesting phenomenon. Something that was previous resistance, now that the price is above the resistance, it now becomes... A potential support. Now let's look at support zones. Okay, so in this case you see the price coming down and what happens? Right, the price in fact gaps down, goes down, hits $66 and then it reverses back up again. All right, and then it starts to come down again, hits the same level, goes up again. So what does it tell you? It tells you that there's some strong buying at 66. And sure enough, it goes up again, comes down to 66, and reverses up strongly. It tells you there must be something at $66, right? And what's at 66? At $66, there is a support level or support zone where demand exceeds supply. That means that there are many buyers waiting there, all queuing up. And the moment $66 is reached, they start to buy and push the price up again. So that tells you there's a support level or there's a flaw to the price, psychological flaw to the price. Okay? And again, it has to touch at least three times to be significant support. Right. Okay. So notice that when a price falls and hits a support level and it can't break it, it will tend to bounce up and have temporary bullish momentum. So, lesson is really simple. Before you sell short, if you're going to do a short sell, check if there's a support level nearby. Do not sell at a support level because if you're going to sell, chances are it's going to go down, hit the support level, bounce up, 
and you're going to be losing money. All right? So again, if you want to sell short, ensure that there's no more support level or the last level of support has been taken out by the sellers. Okay? So once again, you can see over here, it's a support, 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 and it's been tested multiple times. And what happens that over here, this support has been broken because it tells you that the sellers have out maneuvered the buyers, right? All the buyers have been taken out and there's now more sellers than buyers, right? And so when a stock breaks a support level, especially a very strong support, it creates very, very bearish momentum. So as a short-term trader, we want to sell short when a support level is broken and when we start to sell it short over there. Okay, so once again, uh, there are what we call false breakouts where sometimes it may break down or break out and amateurs will short it and it reverses back up again and they lose money. So again, under the video on trading breakouts, I'm going to teach you how to identify the false breakouts from the more accurate breakouts or the more successful ones, if you will. Right, a concept I mentioned before worth mentioning again, that when a stock breaks a resistance zone, that zone now tends to become a support zone. All right, so you can see over here, it's a resistance, 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 and it breaks out. If it happens to come back down again, what happens? That resistance has now become, that's right, a support, supported many times before going higher. So that is a significant concept to understand. In fact, some traders uh, who are more cautious, they do not buy at the initial breakout. Okay? They wait for that breakout to retrace, and when it touches that support that was previous resistance, then they buy somewhere here before it continues going up again. So that's another strategy that traders tend to use. Okay? And similarly, when a stock breaks a support zone, that support now becomes resistance. All right, so you can see it's a support over here. One, two, three. It's a broken support. So again, you could short it over there. Comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up. And you can see what happens. It goes up and now this support, okay, has become, previous support has become resistance. All right, comes down and comes down again. So again, some traders may not like to short sell over here. They wait for the price to retrace. And if it hits that resistance that was previous support, they then short it over here. Okay, or they could short it over here as well. All right. That's concept behind it. Okay, so next, let's take a look at trending support and resistance. So, Support and resistance levels do not always come in horizontal levels. They could be diagonal, if you will, right? So when you see a, a clear uptrend, remember, uptrend is higher highs, right, and higher lows, okay? So when you see a clear uptrend, what you could do is to look at the lows. I repeat, on an uptrend, look at the lows, okay? So that's a low... <clears throat> there's a low, there's a low, okay? And you see if you can connect at least three lows in a straight line. If you can, now, it doesn't always happen, so please do not force it. If it happens, it happens. It doesn't, don't force it, right? It doesn't always happen, right? So in this case, what happens? It so happens that if you connect this low to this low to this low, you got three points, it forms a very straight line. And we call that a trending support level, okay? And that trending support could also act as a support of, of subsequent lows. In other words, remember I told you on an uptrend, we want to buy on a dip, and the dip should be hitting a support, like a moving average, right? Now, besides hitting a moving average, it could also hit a trending support line. In other words, in this case, we've got it tested three times, right? It goes up, what happens? It comes down. And it hits that line. It hits that exact level. And you could buy over here. 
right? Could buy over here. And sure enough, after you buy, boom, it bounces up and continues the trend. Okay? If it retraces back down again and hits that same level and bounces up, once again, that is a buy entry. Okay? <clears throat> so as long as the price remains above that trending support, the uptrend remains. It's kind of like as long as the, the car is on the road, stay in the car, ride the trend all the way to the end, right? And only when the car, imagine this is a road, the car veers off the road, then you may want to exit the long trade, right? Simple enough. Similarly, if you, if you see a downtrend, and once again, what's a downtrend? Lower highs and lower lows, right? So when you see a downtrend, look at the highs. I repeat, on downtrend, look at the highs and see if you can connect three highs in a straight line. If you can, in this case, boom, right? Connect one, two, three. You need at least three points. And again, don't force it, right? That's called a trending resistance. So once you have that trending resistance, again, that will be a reference point to short sell if the price rallies and hits that level once again. So in this case, you can see it rallies, hits the level once again, that would be a time you could short sell, right? You could sell it over there, boom, going down, you make money, right? Once again, it rallies up again, hits that same point, short sell over there, boom, comes down, rally, short sell, boom, comes down. That's how you make money. You identify these repeatable patterns. So let's take a look at how I would draw support and resistance levels for a stock. Let's take a look at IBM common stock. And I'm selecting a one-year period for IBM, again, using daily candles as a swing trader. So what would I see in this uh, particular chart? Well, I see a downtrend over here and a big uptrend over there. But within that, let's take a look. Are there points where prices tend to converge? And if I were to zoom in somewhere over there here, I could see that there is, and again, on whatever charting software you're using, I'm using Think or Swim, uh, there will be drawing tools that you can use. So I'm using the horizontal drawing tool, and it's obvious to me that there is a resistance over there that was tested once, twice, three times, and recently it broke out of that resistance. So this could be the start of a new uptrend. Now, it doesn't mean that you buy exactly over there because please watch the video on trading breakouts to ensure that this is not a false breakout, okay? So for now, it's just identifying these lines. So what I'm saying is that it is above a resistance, so it is a possible long entry, but you have to confirm it with the moving averages as well as certain technical indicators that you'll learn in the subsequent videos. But for now, that's a resistance line I can see, okay? Um, could you also see a support level here? And again, I'm drawing the line of best fit where it touches at least three points. So one, two, I would count that as well, uh, three, four, okay? So that's a support level. So for example, if the price were to come down here, at 145, would I want to short it? No, I would not because there's a potential support of buyers at 142.6 or so that could bounce my price back up again, all right? So remember, the reason I draw these levels is to know, is it safe to go long? Is it safe to go short? I do not go long if there's a resistance above me. I do not go short if there's a support below me, all right? Okay. So now, do you also notice that over there, over here, let me zoom in. There was a significant resistance as well. So in fact, this was a consolidation that um, lasted for about four months, okay? And this was a candle that attempted to break out, but you can see it failed. So this is what we call a false breakout. And again, you're going to learn how to avoid these false breakouts in the video on trading breakouts. But there was a false breakout. 
and this one was a successful breakout right so it broke out and went up there okay so subsequently it found a resistance at 165 okay and you can see it came back down again and if I were to extend this line let me just extend this line you can delete it and redraw it there we go if I extend the line you can see that this resistance over here has become support like I mentioned right and it supported it went back up again and again it couldn't break 165 such a strong resistance okay and recently it broke broke it back so these are the lines that were drawn out so these are the horizontal support and resistance levels that are pretty obvious I draw the ones that are obvious okay um, let me see let me zoom in over here could I draw now this and it's an uptrend you can see it's a short-term uptrend okay um, could I draw a trending support well let me see if I were to connect uh, this to this could I connect uh, at least three points okay so I've got one I've got two right one two three so that is a significant support and this one it tested it right so what happens was the lower shadow of the candle tested it and you can see that the bears attempted to go below the support but the bulls took over and closed uh, or rather it went up and it never managed to break the support in terms of the body of the candle so that is a significant trending support so the question would be would i want to buy over here would I want to buy over here, right? Uh, so based on this resistance, you can say that it's a breakout, right? It's a breakout. So, but you can see that based on this trend, okay, you can see that this uh, uptrend over there. What's happening? I'm buying at the high of the uptrend, which I never want to do. So there's a contradiction, a contradiction, right? So although it's a breakout, but it's at the high of this uptrend, and that tells me that it is risky to take this trade because this could very well retrace back like that. So it's times like that when I will not, I'll decide not to buy and I will not sell. I will not do anything because I do not have all my stars aligned in the right direction. Okay, and this is how I make decisions based on support and resistance levels. So let's take a look at another example. Uh, for this case, let's look at Yahoo, YHOO. And I'm again selecting the one year uh, time frame and looking at daily candles as well. So if you take a look at the last one year, the first thing is to identify the different trends within the major trend. So if you take a look, you notice that over here, it's, it's a downtrend, right? And there's an uptrend over there. And this looks like a consolidation, okay, uh, followed by uh, an uptrend, and then currently in a downtrend, okay. So again, how do I identify these trends? I look for, uh, again, uh, lower highs and lower lows on downtrends, higher highs and higher lows on uptrends, same highs on consolidations, and so on and so forth, all right. So once I get a sense of the different trends within that time frame, I will then see if I can draw any support and resistance levels. So let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to go to my drawing tool, which is over here. Again, whatever charting software you use, you're going to have drawing tools. I'm going to select the horizontal drawing tool over there. And let's look for the very obvious uh, again, price points where prices converge, where it's very obvious as a resistance or support line. Uh, so taking a look at it, you, you see uh, over here, uh, I would draw a <coughs> support and resistance level over there. 
Okay, so let's take a look. Is it significant? So you can see that price uh, kind of like had um, met at that level. It went up there again, once again. So it tested it definitely more than three times, right? One, two, three. And you could see it broke out of that resistance level. And that resistance has become support. Support and then continued the new trend. So it is a very significant line. So we are looking for lines that are obvious and significant significant excuse me okay uh, could we also have drawn a uh, support level over here okay so once again I draw uh, the level where it touches as many points as possible the line of best fit if you will right so that's gonna support 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 and remember again it's a zone so sometimes the price can go a bit out of that zone uh, as you can see over there so that is a breakout pattern that would have been um, a valid entry to buy on the breakout okay but again in later videos I'll teach you specifically how to trade breakout patterns okay uh, now over here um, there was a downtrend we mentioned before uh, but can we draw a very clear um, trending resistance if we can I'll draw it if not I will not force it it's not always the case where you get a clear line that connects all the highs. So if I join that high, do I can I join something more than three times? Okay, I guess you could. Okay, so there's a test one, test two, test three, it broke out of that trending resistance level. So that would have also indicated a change in the trend. All right, and over here it's a uh, uh, an uptrend I would see if I can draw would I have been able to draw a trending support in a way yes okay test one two three uh, and again it broke that support and went into a consolidation over there okay so where are we now we are currently right now over here okay if I can zoom in I'm currently in this zone I'm in a downtrend so on a downtrend, again, I see if I can draw <clears throat> a line that connects the highs. Right, sure enough, I can connect it once, two times, and three times. These two levels, or these two uh, prices are actually the same level. So that's kind of like a resistance over there, if you see. We call that a double top because it hits twice. Now, I've mentioned before that it has to hit at least three times to be a very significant resistance. So I wouldn't call it a significant resistance, but it is a probationary resistance because it touches twice. Okay. So once you've drawn the lines, uh, it will help you to make better decisions in your entries and exits. So in other words, right now, for example, if I were to zoom in to where I am today, so currently uh, the market has closed at 38.61 right now. Question is, would I want to uh, buy or sell? Okay. Now, first and foremost, note this is on a downtrend. So you never want to buy on a downtrend. Okay, so going long at this level is not a very good idea. Okay, uh, obviously. Now, but you may argue that, hey, right now it is kind of at the support level, right? So it could bounce off the support, right? Yeah, that's possible, but uh, you wouldn't know at this point of time. It may break that support. So you have to wait for a bounce of that support to see if that is an entry to go long but again if you are going long over here notice that you are buying on a downtrend so you're going against the trend so uh, there are very short-term swing traders that buy here but they're very careful to exit over here right so they enter over here they exit over there you can just draw something for you over there uh, they may enter here if they see a bounce and if it goes up, all right, they would do a quick exit over here uh, before the trend continues down. So that's what we call a counter trend trade. You're trading against the trend, catching that short term bounce. Okay, but if you're more of a trend follower, you would not want to do that because you do not want to trade against the trend. So on a downtrend, you want to go short. In fact, okay, but would you want to go short? At this point, no, because it's at the bottom of a downtrend. If you recall, on a downtrend, you want to short 
when it rallies to a resistance level. In other words, if it happens to uh, go up here and hit this uh, resistance that we have identified, okay, uh, and it bounces down, okay, then we could argue that this downtrend, okay, would be a good time to sell short over here and short it as it comes down. Okay, so that's how I use these support and resistance levels to make decisions. Do I enter long and short and so on and so forth? Now, in the videos to come, you're going to learn how to use a lot more perimeters. We're going to learn things about moving averages and technical indicators that would help you to make an even more informed decision besides the support and resistance levels. So this concludes the video on support and resistance levels. If you like this video, you want to watch more, do subscribe to this channel. This is Adam Koo and I'll see you soon.